Today, we are initiating a significant experiment by deploying a massive bomb into the Mariana Trench. However, our plans don't end there, we also intend to nuke a hurricane and a volcano. What unfolds when one introduces one of the most lethal weapons mankind has ever created into the world's most remarkable natural phenomena? Let's commence our nuclear exploration by dropping a bomb into the Mariana Trench. What would happen if we were to nuke the Mariana Trench? Join us on a celestial odyssey, the boldest nuclear experiments in the cosmos. Welcome to the profound depths of the ocean, the Mariana Trench, situated in the western Pacific Ocean, just 360 kilometers away from the island of Guam. Your descent will take you 11 kilometers down to Challenger Deep, the trench's deepest point. Here, you could pile approximately 30 Empire State buildings on top of each other before reaching the surface. Joining the ranks of scientists, naval officers, and even filmmaker James Cameron, you would carry the most precious cargo of all, the most colossal nuclear bomb ever created. Before delving into the potential consequences of detonating a bomb at the trench's bottom, it's crucial to address the challenge of safely transporting it there. Accidental detonation near the surface could pose dangers akin to a colossal nuclear tsunami, with waves hundreds of meters high spreading out in all directions. This scenario could present a hazard to nearby islands, such as Guam, Japan, or the Philippines. Fortunately, these waves would behave differently than typical tsunami waves, breaking earlier and causing less catastrophic outcomes when reaching land. Nevertheless, it's imperative to avert such a crisis and securely place the bomb in the trench. To achieve this, protection against the extreme pressures at the trench's bottom is essential. The pressure at this depth is so immense that it would feel like having 100 adult elephants on your head. Utilizing a specialized pressure vessel for transportation, akin to Operation Wigwam in 1955, becomes necessary. In that operation, the United States detonated a bomb at a depth of 600 meters, twice as powerful as the one dropped on Hiroshima. The explosion created a massive bubble across the water, with radioactive contamination spreading over 13 square kilometers. However, your bomb would surpass Wigwam in scale, more comparable to the Tsar Bomba. This nuclear weapon was over 3,000 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Nagasaki. Placing it much deeper than the Wigwam test, at the moment of detonation, a hot steam bubble would rapidly expand, covering about one square kilometer on the surface. Although a massive bulge in the water would be visible, it wouldn't reach great heights due to detonating the bomb at such depth. The water pressure above would cause the bubble to collapse, with this expansion and contraction recurring for three or four cycles. While neighboring coastal cities need not fear being wiped out by a tsunami, the aftermath would not conclude there. The heightened temperatures from the explosion could give rise to intense hurricanes, and the turbulent waters mixed with radioactive materials would adversely impact marine life. The explosion would result in significant casualties and potentially blind deep-sea fish due to the bright flash of light. Over time, unexpected or surprising effects on the ecosystem near the detonation site could manifest, including the growth of corals as large as cars, as observed after 23 detonations at the U.S. nuclear testing site on Bikini Atoll, not to mention an abundance of aquatic animals. While the mutations of marine life might become evident over time, that's the potential outcome if the Mariana Trench were to be nuked. Now, let's shift our focus from nuclear weapons in the sea to those in the sky. What if we were to nuke a hurricane? On an annual basis, about half a dozen hurricanes make landfall in the United States, causing a range of effects from heavy winds and flooding to the devastating destruction of communities and loss of lives. Instead of preparing for impact with sandbags and survival kits, what if hurricanes never reached land at all? What if we could prevent hurricanes by using nuclear bombs? How would this be achieved, and could it lead to a nuclear apocalypse, or would a bomb even have the power to halt a hurricane? This is a what if, and here's what would happen if we nuked a hurricane. Before delving into the potential consequences of nuking a hurricane, let's first understand what hurricanes are. These massive storms form over warm ocean water near the equator and are tropical storms. The water they form over must be above 26 degrees Celsius for them to develop. This warm water generates humid air, thrust upward by tropical winds, creating storm clouds. Lighter winds outside the clouds steer and aid their growth. This cycle continues until the storm achieves winds of at least 119 km per hour, at which point it is classified as a hurricane. Typically, hurricanes are about 160 km in diameter and can be nearly as large as the state of Texas. These storms can last for days, making them a formidable force that you wouldn't want approaching your home. 
Now, the idea of nuking hurricanes is not new and has been proposed since the 1950s. The concept involves a submarine traveling underwater below the eye of the storm. Once there, the sub would launch a nuclear bomb, creating an explosion intended to blast out hot air and introduce cold, denser air. This cold air would then slow down the wind and theoretically stop the hurricane. However, the reality is that the immense energy produced by a hurricane, equivalent to a 10-megaton nuclear bomb exploding every 20 minutes, makes this approach ineffective. In fact, all the energy used by humanity in 1990 was 20% less than what a single hurricane produces. Therefore, even modern bombs would hardly make a dent in a hurricane. Furthermore, the hurricane would carry the radiation and other hazardous materials from the bomb down to the land, transforming it into a radioactive hurricane, causing additional destruction as it moved across affected areas. Attempting a larger bomb, perhaps more than 100 atomic bombs packed into one giant bomb, may seem like a solution to stop a hurricane. However, the aftermath would reveal that such an extreme approach would result in the destruction of most of the Earth. Consequently, whether attempting to nuke a hurricane with a single bomb or an enormous one, it proves to be an ill-advised idea. Unfortunately, the number of hurricanes is on the rise, with researchers attributing this trend to the warming of the oceans due to climate change. Nuking this problem is not a viable solution. As a final hypothetical experiment, let's consider what would happen if we nuked an active volcano, putting these nuclear weapons to use within the confines of the volcano. What unfolds next? Volcanoes represent the ultimate natural force of destruction, and they are unforgiving. Relentless and unstoppable, there are approximately 1,500 active volcanoes worldwide, with over 10% of them located in the United States. Is there a conceivable way to halt their potential destruction? Can we counteract the fury of volcanoes with an equally formidable force? What if we were to nuke an active volcano? Would this resolve the issue, or might it exacerbate the situation? This is a what if, and here's what would happen if we were to nuke an active volcano. Volcanoes are both awe-inspiring and fearsome, representing an extraordinary force of nature capable of wreaking havoc on our lives. But what if we attempted to turn the tables and combat them with their own methods? Could we effectively use a nuclear bomb to quell the fiery inferno? To undertake such a daring endeavor, we would need to deploy powerful measures. The nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan, during World War II had an explosive equivalent of over 130 million kilograms of TNT. Could we utilize a similar device to dismantle a volcano into fragments? First, we'd have to pinpoint the target. While predicting when a volcano will erupt is challenging, there are warning signs, such as tiny earthquakes, releases of steam and gases from the volcano's mouth, and bulging from the sides. Despite these indicators, forecasting an eruption remains a substantial educated guess. Assuming scientists successfully identified an active volcano on the brink of eruption, coordination with the military would be imperative to attempt to halt it. Ideally, if the eruption could be predicted a few days in advance, people could evacuate without causing the typical traffic jams witnessed during hurricanes, tsunamis, and other disasters. Once everyone is out of harm's way, geologists, volcanologists, and weapons experts would determine vulnerable spots on the volcano's sides for effective targeting. A skilled crew of pilots would then fly over the volcano, release their payload, and promptly exit the vicinity. In a perfect scenario, with precisely calibrated explosives hitting the right spot in the ideal manner, the volcano's summit would collapse inward, keeping the magma predominantly underground. Some seepage might occur around the volcano's base, but it would be significantly less than a natural eruption. However, the reality is less optimistic. Geologists caution that attempting to bomb a volcano might actually worsen the situation considerably. The bomb's explosion combined with the internal pressure buildup in the volcano could amplify the eruption, releasing more ash and lava over a wider area than the volcano's inherent power would have achieved. This assumes, of course, that the target is accurately hit. If the nuke were to miss its target, a nuclear bomb would still be dropped in an area populated enough for people to feel the effects of the radiation. Faced with such a choice, one must decide between death by lava or nuclear destruction. However, attempting to resolve the issue by bombing volcanoes is not a viable solution. Geologists emphasize that it may even make things worse, considerably worse. Nature's forces, especially those of volcanoes, are not easily overcome by our technological firepower. Despite the fascination of the concept on paper, nuking a volcano proves impractical. Just as we can't halt the buildup of magma beneath volcanoes, we can't bomb our way out of this problem. 
At a what if, we have explored various unconventional approaches such as throwing trash and pouring liquid nitrogen into volcanoes, but the consensus remains, don't mess with volcanoes. While the idea may sound intriguing, nuking a volcano is not a feasible solution. Instead of attempting to combat nature, perhaps we should consider ways to utilize these natural wonders for constructive purposes, such as disposing of waste. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries signing off.